Good afternoon all and welcome to our virtual open day for 2023. We are delighted, very delighted to see so many of you joining us today. My name is Natalie McManus and I will be hosting this event. I'd like to kick off with a few housekeeping rules to ensure a smooth and uninterrupted experience for all participants. Please remain muted throughout the event. If you have any questions, we encourage you to use the chat function where staff will do their best to respond in the dedicated question and answer time slots. You will also have the opportunity to register for program specific Ask Me Anything sessions at a later time. This event will be recorded for future reference, so you might like to disable your camera if your visual privacy is preferred. Finally, your Zoom settings do allow for speaker view. This will contribute to optimal viewing. Please enjoy the next hour and again, welcome to you all. Welcome. Welcome, I'm Denise Kirkpatrick, President of Nantian Institute. It's my pleasure to welcome you to our virtual open day, and I'm thrilled that you have chosen to join us and find out more about learning with Nantian Institute. Today, you will hear about our courses, experience a little of what it's like to learn with us, and hear from recent graduates and staff about decisions to study with us and learning journeys that are possible. I begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the lands on which we meet and recognise their continuing connection to land, waters, learning and culture. I'm joining you today from the lands of the Wadi Wadi people and pay my respects to Elders past and present. I also pay my respects to any Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples with us today. At Nantien, we give you the opportunity to study at your pace and in your own way. While we have a beautiful contemporary campus space located adjacent to the Nantien Temple, just outside Wollongong, we also make it possible for you to study from home. Our subjects are available for online study, if that's what's more convenient to you. And unlike other universities, our scheduling is flexible. You don't have to wait for a new semester to commence before you begin learning with us. And we encourage you to study in the way that suits you best. If you want to begin by studying one subject only, then that's okay. We're a small graduate institution. While you will learn with like-minded people, you will also be exposed to a diversity of perspectives. Here, you're not just a number. As one of our students, we know you and we work with you to succeed. Your learning and interactions with us will be personalised and take account of your circumstances, needs and aspirations. While we are a young institution, we are well established and have already developed a strong reputation for our programs and teaching. We are just 10 years old, but already we outperform many of our competitors in external measures of educational quality. We are proud of our excellent performance on external measures of the quality of our courses and our teaching. In the most recent survey of graduates across Australia, we were ranked well above the national average on all measures of student satisfaction, including our support for you, the level of engagement in learning and the development of relevant skills. We were awarded a rating of well over 90% on the student's assessment of overall satisfaction with the course and study with NANTM. When you learn with us, you will be supported and guided to experience deep learning through focused attention, reflection and heightened awareness. The skills and knowledge you develop as a student will enhance your personal life and contribute to improved professional practice and performance. 
At Nantien, our teaching integrates introspection and experiential learning into academic study in a way that supports your academic and social engagement. We create a learning environment in which you will develop self-understanding along with analytical and critical capacities. Learning with us will help you cultivate skills for engaging constructively with others. When you learn with us, you will see that the focus of our teaching and your learning incorporates first-person approaches which connect you to your own experience of learning. You will be in control of your learning and you will contribute directly to it. I know that some of you are wondering, do I need to be a Buddhist to study at NTI? Or will I become a Buddhist if I study with NTI? So the answer to both of those questions is not necessarily. While many of our students choose to pursue in-depth study of Buddhism and Buddhist practice, that is not a requirement. We hope that you will gain an understanding of Buddhist philosophies and values that will enrich and inform your life and your professional practice. Our programs and your learning are supported by evidence from contemporary Western research and established Eastern thinking and wisdom. We believe that this integration creates a balanced perspective, allowing you to determine your own informed view. We will assist you in developing the resilience, compassion and inner strength to respond productively to events in your personal life and the workplace. If you aspire to be a more compassionate leader and manager, we can assist you. If you want to bring better balance to your life and relationships, our courses will guide you. And if you want to engage in a scholarly and intellectual study of Buddhism, we will facilitate that. Our staff are the best in their field. You will be taught and guided by outstanding academics and professional practitioners who are leaders in their areas of expertise. We have strong connections with other institutions in Australia and we are part of an international network of universities. You will have the opportunity to study some subjects with our partner universities, including the University of the West in the United States. I talked earlier about our beautiful campus. If you are interested in seeing our space and experiencing more of Nantien, I invite you to join our campus tour scheduled for the 3rd of June. I am so pleased that you have joined us and hope that today's experience will affirm for you that study at Nantien is the right decision. It's now time to hear from our teachers and graduates. I'm pleased to invite Venerable Dr. Jay Wei, Head of the Program Applied Buddhist Studies and Humanistic Buddhism to lead us in a short guided meditation. Thank you. Thank you, Denise. Here in NTI, we emphasize contemplative education in which we encourage deep learning through focused attention and inner awareness. Let's take a few moments to check in to ourselves before we start the nourishing discussions to come. I invite you now to settle comfortably into your seats, sitting upright. Close your eyes if you are comfortable. Let's start by taking a deep breath in. Feel the air filling your lungs and abdomen. Now let the air out and feel your entire body relaxing. Take another deep breath in. 
and about. Relax. One more time together. Breathe in and out. Relax. Now gently bring your attention to the tip of your nose and watch your breath in its natural rhythm. There is nowhere else to go and nothing else to do. Simply watch your breath for the next few moments as you allow your body the privilege of focusing on this nourishing breath. Thank you everyone for checking in with me. It is my pleasure now to introduce Elizabeth Kuzmanowska, mental health nurse and behavioral specialist who will share with us a mental health success story. Elizabeth, please. Hi everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, I feel very honoured to be standing here today as a representative of the mental health stream at Nantian Institute because the Institute is no ordinary place of learning. In all areas of study, subjects are designed to ensure that learning is holistic, integrated and focused on exploring socially significant issues that cause human suffering and inequality. In modern mental health services, dominant social paradigms, such as the medical model, continue to promote a separation of the mind and the body. And it squeezes the human condition into a collection of narrow psychiatric descriptions that are designed to dehumanize the will. And they force us into behaving like automatons. The medical model looks at what is wrong with the person, and not what the person needs. It focuses on eliminating and removing symptoms, removing pain, removing body parts, and in mid last century, removing the spirit via treatments that continue to be widely used today, such as ECT and high risk mind altering medications. Whilst these are productive for many, the limitations of such models at times create low expectations and they often lead to a loss of independence, choice, dignity and control of one's life. At Nantian Institute, we seek to challenge our students to think beyond the prevailing paradigms and to incorporate a range of mental health treatment modalities as legitimate and powerful instruments of social change that center on empowering communities and creating autonomy to reduce social suffering. Rapidly evolving evidence and the emergence of new research technologies are forcing a revision of historical truths and beliefs, traditions and approaches to mental health and wellness as we know it. One such technology includes a mental health pioneer by the name of Israel Goldiamond who spent many years investigating the clinical applications of behavior analysis to helping people with a great variety of mental health problems. Gold Diamond discouraged the use of terms like dysfunctional, maladaptive, irrational, when referring to people and behavior. And he argued that all behavior is lawful 
And these are sensible outcomes of each individual's personal interactions with the environment. In other words, behaviours that appear to be dangerous, disgusting, bizarre, or disturbed are usually creative but costly solutions to one's challenges. When we encourage recovery from a constructional strengths-based approach, humans thrive and they learn new skills easily. This is exemplified in Joe's story, not his real name. Joe's a 15 year old client who sustained years of mental health stereotype and stigma within the foster care and mental health systems. When he was 10 years of age, Joe was taken by his mother to the local hospital emergency department and he was left there. She did not come to collect him upon discharge. She reported to authorities that Joe was too mentally unstable and too dangerous to live at home. Joe's challenging behaviours included high and repeated physical aggression, threats to others, threats of suicide, and an array of trauma-based anxiety and depression symptoms. Joe had been diagnosed with multiple psychiatric diagnoses since the age of five, as well as given a mixture of high dose psychotropic, psychostimulant, antidepressant, and sedating medications. Joe was quite sedated much of the time, except when he was demonstrating aggression. Taking Gold Diamond's non-linear constructional approach, which didn't focus on the removal of the problem behavior, the aggression, we reorientated Joe's goals towards the promotion of greater choice and control by him by increasing the available means to which he could achieve those things important to him. For him, this was a choice to live with a normal foster family and to be free of suicidal thoughts. So the treatment we selected for Joe to achieve his goals included fortnightly coaching sessions with his house leader and monthly meetings with Joe's support team in the group home. So the aim was to change staff practices and attitudes in order to be more present for Joe less judgmental, which in turn reduced his aggression, reduced his anxiety and consequently reduced his suicidal thinking. From a mental health therapeutic perspective, we used approaches such as acceptance and commitment training, mindfulness, reparenting, a whole range of therapeutic attachments that was a very abnormal situation for him to be in. In time, Joe learned to walk away from his violent situations and aggression, and he valued his relationships with his workers, which required a lot of role play to get to this point. This also went both ways with staff where we role played different versions of responses to the aggression. All of Joe's psychiatric medication was ceased and after several months, Joe's anxiety symptoms reduced to a manageable level where he didn't have chronic thoughts of self-harm. A foster home was found for Joe, which had a more potent effect on his recovery than any other element or treatment offered to him over the 10 years of his life of being on treatment. This case study demonstrates that recovery is not linear and that positive mental health outcomes are dependent on the interconnections between disciplines to work in unison, which includes mainstream mental health services, Buddhism, behavior analysis, psychotherapy, and many others, which we pride ourselves on at Nantian Institute. I genuinely hope to see you at the Institute and I wish you very well in your academic journey. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much, Elizabeth. Uh, we have one question here for you. Uh, which subjects do you teach at NTI and what, um, what can students expect from them? So I teach um, the social health and wellbeing, um, social policy and wellbeing subject um, that essentially is a subject around population health and the social determinants um, of health outcomes. So social policy at a 
government level, um, at a national level, at a state level, local health policy level, at health services. Um, the aim of that particular subject is to create a project and an intervention that is health promoting and walk away from the subject with a package essentially that can be implemented in any service and be ready um, to run with essentially and health promote in any community. Um, so that's the health and well-being. And I also teach older persons mental health. Um, and again, much like the mental health subject is uh, multidisciplinary um, and draws from many philosophies and research to ensure that older age and the specialty of older age in mental health is not just understood from a medical perspective um, or health that you know the social determinants have so much to do with our outcomes. So they're the two subjects plus the mental health subject that um, were I just discussed in terms of my example. Uh, so I hope that students expect to have um, a broad range of disciplines and philosophies that they are exposed to in those subjects um, and hopefully draw on those in their own work day to day that they can apply in an effective way. Great, thank you. And just following on from that in that example, do you see graduates of these courses being able to guide clients in such ways? I've got time to answer that one last little one. Yes, absolutely. Um, so very, very proudly, um, last year Nantian Institute was accredited by the Australian College of Mental Health Nurses. Um, and so the postgraduate master's program is well recognised nationally and internationally for mental health nurses who want to become credentialed. It's a bit of a rigorous process, um, but this degree allows that process very easily and smoothly now that we're accredited um, with the college. So that's one benefit. Um, so that private practice is an option there, but also being seen as an expert in whichever industry and field that you're working in, in mental health. Um, as Denise pointed out, uh, it is world standard, the mental health masters, I believe. Um, and that's certainly the feedback that I receive from students. Fantastic. Well, thank you again, Elizabeth, for sharing your insights and expertise with us today. Thanks so much. I would let, now like to introduce guest speaker, Nissa Chianatana. Nissa is part of the NTI alumni and has recently completed a Master of Arts in Health and Social Wellbeing at NTI. She is excited to share her NTI experience and journey with you all. There will be an opportunity to also ask Nissa any questions via the chat at the end of her presentation. Hi everyone, namaste. My name is Nissa. Two years ago, I was here on the virtual open day, just like you are now. I did my master's in health and social wellbeing, as um, Natalie is saying, as a full-time international student in Sydney. After having heard Dr. Nadine deliver the presentation about well-being studying virtually, also met her in a physical open days at Health and Wellbeing Market at the Nantian campus, I felt that Nantian Institute was the perfect fit for me. With my backgrounds in yoga, Buddhism, yoga therapies, I thought it would be very useful to build my academic credibilities. One of my main studying goals was to apply the skill and knowledge from NTI to support my well-being and professionally support others' well-being using the integrative knowledge and experiences. Not being a native English speaker nor came from design background, I started my learning with NTI 900. I met lovely Camille who passionately taught us on communication to how to communicate clearly in words and critically inquire to presenting information and being discerned of our own bias and judgments. Camille and NTI teams also helped me to form weekly studying group so that we could support each other and collaborate on studying ideas and regularly did yoga together in Zoom. What I learned from NTI went beyond comprehensive knowledge 
that came from academic readings, research, and lectures on well being and a Buddhist ethics. But through the contemplative studying model, the academic structure, which including deadlines, this learning environment encouraged me to use not only cognitive thinking, but hopefully applying more and more emotional intelligence. I learned to better self-disciplines and create healthy boundaries in my studying and my life. I found every studying unit provides great values on well-being and a clear view on social welfare. My, my four favorite subjects are mindfulness and professionalisms, compassion at work, Buddhisms, and psychotherapy and art therapy. I found holistic approach with scientific clinical research fascinating. Dr. Nadine's offer an extensive knowledge on the um, in intricate bonds between mindfulness and compassion. Also clarified the meanings on both aspects in different contexts like psychologies, neuroscience, Buddhisms, and further on. I always been inspired by her balanced lecture approach on science, humanities, and spiritual sides. She practiced what she teaches. When I was feeling burnt out near at the end of my studying and struggling with sleeping disorder, NTI teams really kindly helped me to find the time to take care of myself and then I can finish my studying. The more I understood about mindfulness and the art of compassion, including self-compassion, I was able to improve the issue of my self-judgments and self-expectation, but also to really strengthen my leadership skill. And through it, I created an effective ongoing well-being program, combining yoga and mindfulness therapies from my um, corporate teams at Virgin Actors supporting the staff to reduce stress at work by practicing meditations, practicing breathing. Recently, I was also invited to join One and All, a creative hub to support people with disabilities and mental conditions to create 12 weeks programs using yoga, mindfulness and art therapy to support their participants and bring wellness to the communities. When I told them what I learned in my degree, they found NTI to be very much aligned with their values and philosophy. In conclusion, what I learned from NTI was invaluable experience in my life. I came out from the degree from previously being afraid of not being good enough to the healthier relationship with myself, people around me, and more confident to take next step in well-being field. I feel that I can fully flourish using what I learned because I gained the inner resilience from overcome the challenges during studying and living period. To quote Helen Keller, alone we can do so little, together we can do so much. I strongly believe that Nantian's communities offer incredible learning and can help anyone to develop personally and professionally. So I hope that you will come to join us here then really shine together and try your authenticities and apply what you learn to support your well-being and positively, positively contribute to society and globally. Thank you for your time and listening. Thank you, Nissa. Gee, how inspiring. Um, so having done your study throughout COVID, uh, what were the best components of uh, the online experience for you? The flexibilities to be able to studies wherever I happen to be. So as long as I have my laptops with me and, you know, um, have the internet to actually locked in, the NTI's learning portal is very easy to access the, the learning materials. But also, as the president, um, Denise, mentioned, because there is um, no, the NTI's really offer kind of a no gapping between semesters, I can actually keep going with my studying. So it's really helped me to actually keep going with my full-time studying, you know, in within two years. So it was really great to actually have that flexibility and convenience. And if you are not an English native speaker, did you have difficulties using English 
uh, as a medium of instruction in class? Thanks, Rose. Um, no, I would, I had a lot of help from NTI's um, student service. And, you know, even though it is academic studying and there's some science, a lot of science um, sub, um, vocabularies in there, I was given the full support all the times as long as I keep, you know, I keep asking and being open to receive. So, you know, it's a learning journey and it's a working progress. And um, how do you see this program uh, working as a part-time student? I think any students, whether working part-time or full-time can really benefit from it. You know, particularly part-time, I feel you have, might have more pace um, to actually take your time to studies and to take time to digest information. I didn't have that choice because of my student's visa at the time. Um, so I have to process information as well as I can with what I did. But I think part-time can actually even give yourself more space to actually self-care and also to actually take the time to learn it in, learn the material. Fabulous. Well, thank you again, Nissa, for your contribution today. And we are really looking forward to hearing about where your future takes you. Thanks again. Thank you. I'd like to introduce our final guest speaker, NTI lecturer in Buddhism, Dr. Elizabeth McDougall. Hello, everybody. It's really nice to have you all here. Thank you for joining us. Um, I guess following on from Nisa and Elizabeth Kuzminovska, I just wanted to share a little bit of my journey getting coming here to Nantian. So I grew up in Western Canada and I found in high school, secondary school and early in university, uh, I felt quite disconnected. You know, I felt the education that I was quite boring. Um, and, and so when I was in my early twenties, I, I met a few people and I had a couple of subjects at university and it led me to take a trip to India. And I was seeking meditation. I wanted to learn more about meditation because I think what I was missing in my education system, there was nothing that was speaking to my inner world. And as a teenager, I, there were periods where I felt very confused, um, you know, depressed and it, just a lack of meaning. Um, and so I think I was seeking something on the inside. So I went to Buddhism and there I met with the Tibetans and the Tibetan Buddhists who in you know, a large community of Tibetan Buddhists in India, as many of you know. And so I ended up becoming a nun. I took a radical step and I became a Tibetan Buddhist nun in 2000. And then I spent the next 17 years living in Tibetan nunneries and around Tibetan nunneries in India and also on the Tibetan plateau. And so essentially it was my main adult education was in a, a traditional Buddhist pathway and community. And, and for me, I was very fortunate, you know, I was a foreigner to the tradition and, you know, it's a tradition that's kind of a little bit uh, unstable, uh, much of it's in exile in India and around the world. Um, but I learned the language and I, and I studied with, you know, the Tibetan monastic system. And, you know, it's not perfect. It's a human community. There's all kinds of, you know, uh, all kinds of dark, un, dark underbellies in any human community. But overall, I was very fortunate and I, and I got so much out of it. So it was 17 years for me. And because this tra the, tra the traditional Buddhist education is, is a cultivation of the person. It's not so much just about learning information and ideas, you know, through book learning. It's really about, you know, a human cultivation. And Tibetan Buddhism in particular, um, it's as a form of Mahayana Buddhism that really prizes compassion. So it's almost, it really is the main end goal of their education system. And they really prize human beings that, that demonstrate and embody compassion. So for me, this was very inspiring because it's a living tradition with many mentors, many humans that have walked that pathway. It's also a tradition of more than 2,500 years, roughly speaking. So it's a lineage and along with a very sophisticated psychology and a sophisticated philosophy, Buddhism has these methods, these contemplative methods for the mind to look at itself. And, and that adds a really interesting dimension. 
and it teaches the potential. You know, Elizabeth Kuzmanovka pointed to this that, you know, in, in often in, in Western psychology, it's mostly looking at what's wrong with the mind, but in Buddhism, it's really pointing to the great potential, to great human potential and all of those incredible qualities of compassion and insight and, and skillful behavior and so on. So for me as a, as a person, as an individual, I think what I got from, um, you know, studying and training with Tibetan Buddhism, certainly a lot more peace. I think, you know, I still have my bad days, but I have a lot better relationship with myself. And, and it's sometimes sort of hard to, to sum up, but fundamentally just a kind of inspiration for being alive. It, you know, this pathway of human potential and, and a lot of tools, particularly to deal with hardships because life is difficult. Uh, we never know what to expect. So when, when hardships happen, I found that it's really given me those tools. But after, a, after 17 years of that, then um, I, I came back to my home culture in the West. I always planned to do that and had felt a little bit homesick. So I studied in academia with postgraduate studies, University of Sydney and other places. And, and that was wonderful. It sort of allowed me to bridge and allowed me to look clearly at both my Western heritage of knowledge and at traditional Buddhism. But also like Elizabeth Kosmanovka pointed out, I, I, I do find that in the mainstream Western education, there's a, it becomes constrained, particularly when it's looking at mind science and psychology. It's a little bit constrained by the view of materialism and you know, sometimes that mind body dualism. And so for me, Nantian is, is a really interesting space because it has the same high standards of scholarship and, and rigorous intellectual learning as any mainstream university in, in our fields. But it with the contemplative pedagogy and, and the kind of creative space here at Nantian, we're allowed to explore Buddhism and mind-body sciences and psychology and mental health, social well-being. Uh, you know, with, with contemplative pedagogy and ways of knowing that involve the whole person. So it's, it's a very high standard of, of a graduate institute, academically speaking, but it really has heart, really has heart. The knowledge and the values are really aligned here at Nantian. I've just been here for about almost six months now, lecturing in Buddhist studies, and, um, and I'm really happy to be here. I don't think there's any, anywhere else in Australia like it. So thank you for having me. Thank you, Dr. McDougall. Geez, what an incredible quest. Thank you so much for sharing your personal journey with us today. Uh, just one quick question, if you don't mind. How has being a monastic informed your academic work? Um, I think, well, the monastery is like a Buddhist monastery is, is in many ways quite similar to a, an academic institution, you know, that sort of disciplined learning. So it, it sort of taught it taught me the discipline of learning, I think. You know, the subjects would be quite different from a mainstream liberal arts university, for example, but you know, the the discipline of you know reading and reflecting and processing and memorizing, there's a lot of memorization. So it kind of just taught me how to learn, I think. Thank you so much. We now move into the next segment of our open day where we can do dive deeper into your areas of interest. We've arranged two breakout rooms for you to engage with our heads of program in either Buddhism or health studies. If you are interested in applied Buddhism or humanistic Buddhism, please join the breakout room labeled study Buddhism. Alternatively, if you are interested in studying health and social well-being or mental health, please join the breakout room labelled Study Health. The breakout rooms will be open for 15 minutes. Then we will regroup with further information on opportunities to connect with NTI in the coming weeks. Um, and that may be helpful in making um, your study decisions and plans. There are instructions on screen for joining the breakout rooms and there are staff in the chat to offer assistance. We'll see you when we get back in here. So thank you for joining us today. We look forward to connecting with you again and would like to share two upcoming opportunities that may interest you. The first is an opportunity to visit us in person 
we will be holding an in-person campus tour on the 3rd of June from 11 to 12 p.m., where you will have the opportunity to explore the campus grounds and state-of-the-art facilities. You are also invited to NTI's health and wellbeing market that are on that day. We will also be offering virtual Ask Me Anything sessions with our academics. This will give you the opportunity to discuss the programs and subjects on offer and how to explore um, and explore how you might make the leap and study with us at NTI, sorry. Apologies if we did not cover all questions asked in today's open day, but we encourage you to stay connected via Facebook or Instagram where you can ask questions via the message function or email us directly via the email address on screen. On behalf of the staff at NTI, we hope you have an enjoyable evening and good night to you all. <laughs>